Hi, I'm Brad from Make It, and today I'm going to be turning this inflatable kayak into a fishing kayak. Now, I know you're probably wondering, why would anybody do this? Well, for me, I don't have the space to store an actual kayak, and this thing, I can store it in my closet. It's also super easy to transport. I can fit this thing in the back of a car, and not to mention, it's pretty cheap for a kayak. Everything that I've used in this video is linked down in the description below. If you're interested, go ahead and check those out. But for now, let's go ahead and get to the build. I began by inflating the kayak so I could figure out what my inside dimensions are. This kayak is divided up into three main air chambers and two small air chambers on each end of the kayak. And they have to be inflated in a certain order. It's also reassuring to know that if you are unlucky enough to have the kayak get a hole in it while you're out on the water, you still have four other air chambers to keep you floating until you can reach land safely. Once the kayak was mostly inflated, I could get a rough dimension of what the inside floor will be. It was approximately 20 inches wide by 7.5 feet. For the floorboard, I picked up two 1x10 boards that are 8 feet long and cut them down to size using my speed square and circular saw. I want the floor to be collapsible because it will make it much easier to transport and store away when not in use. So I used four hinges to secure the two 1x10 boards together. Next, I placed the inflated kayak on top of my floorboard so I could shape the floor to fit inside the kayak. I used the bottom of the kayak to get a rough outline for my floorboards. I could then cut out the shape with a jigsaw. I made sure to sand the edges of the boards before test fitting the floor inside the kayak. Once I got the floor to the right size, I used my router with a round over bit to round off all the edges of the floor. This part is optional, using sandpaper on all the edges would work just fine. Next I placed the floor back in the kayak so I could determine where I wanted the seat console to be located and how big it needed to be. In this camera shot, I actually placed the floor upside down for no particular reason. The side with the hinges will be on the bottom. Using my miter saw and tail saw, I cut down my boards for the seat console. I used pocket hole screws so I didn't have any screw heads showing. I could then start assembling everything together. Next, I could mount the kayak seat. Since I will be storing fishing poles and other kayak accessories behind the seat, I want to be able to reach those items easily. So I mounted a seat swivel to the seat console so that I'll be able to slightly rotate the chair. I used carriage bolts to the underneath side of the seat console, which allowed me to secure the seat swivel and chair to the console. With the seat console put together, I could move on to building the mounting support bracket that will hold the fishing poles and a trolling motor because, well, why not? I want to put this inflatable kayak to the test and I already have a trolling motor from my previous inflatable rowboat modification project. So if you like this video, then you might like that project video as well. I'll leave a link in the description. Again, I use my miter saw and table saw to cut down the boards for the mounting bracket. I also use my jigsaw to cut an angled edge on the front of the mounting bracket which will secure the rod holders. This will allow the fishing poles to be slightly angled toward the back of the kayak, which is really just a preference of mine. I wanted to support the trolling motor beam so that the beam is slightly resting on the side tubes of the kayak because that should make everything a more secure and hopefully reduce the kayak from leaning to one side. For the trolling motor beam, I cut down a 2x4 and beveled off the ends for aesthetics. And I use a router with a roundover bit to smooth all the edges. I could then move on to fishing rod holders, which I just used PVC pipe. To mount the holders to the support board, I drilled two holes through the center of the PVC pipe. The hole on the outside is wide enough to get my drill bit and screw through, while the hole closest to the support board is only wide enough to get the screw in. Next, I could lay out the floorboard so I could determine where I wanted my seat and my mounting bracket to go. 
I then drilled holes to the C console and bracket support through the floorboard which I will use to attach and detach them using bolts with wing nuts. For the flooring, I used construction adhesive to secure the outdoor carpet piece that I had left over from my previous project. When the adhesive had dried, I cut off the excess carpet using a utility knife. I could then sand everything down and round off all the edges before putting my coat of paint on. Since my carpet didn't stretch long enough to cover the entire floorboard, I just painted the rest of that as well. This is the back of the kayak, so it really wasn't a huge deal. Once the paint had dried, I could start piecing everything together. After assembling the motor mount to the support bracket, I added a little notch on the opposite side of where the motor is going to be mounted. This notch will be used so I can have a place to put the rope for the anchor, and it won't be rubbing against the side of the kayak. Also, having the anchor on this side will help counterbalance the weight of the trolling motor. I also secured a rope cleat to the back of the seat console to secure the anchor rope. I then glued in carriage bolts from the underneath side of the floor because this is how I will be able to attach and detach the seat and support bracket. And to make it easier to locate the holes for the carriage bolts, I countersunk each hole. When using a kayak, there's always a possibility of the kayak tipping and rolling over. For that purpose, everything has to be secured down to the actual kayak so you don't lose anything. So I removed the two straps that secured the inflatable seats down to the kayak and then used them instead to secure the floor to the kayak. Since all my modifications are mounted to the floor, I don't have to worry about losing anything if the kayak does tip and roll over. To secure the trolling motor battery, I'm using the strap and the two brackets that came with the battery box. Finally, I could add the finishing touches to this kayak. I also placed two bungee cords in front of the seat console to secure my tackle boxes when placed there. And what would be a fishing kayak without a cup holder and fish finder? With the fish kayak done, I could pack everything up and take it to the water. Okay, so we are out here at the lake and it is a beautiful, cold, chilly Wisconsin morning. But I got the kayak set up and ready to go. And I'm having a pretty good feeling about this morning, I hope. We're testing this kayak in two different stages. The first, I'm not gonna put any gear or anything in it. I just wanna get inside and make sure it's gonna work and that it's not gonna be top heavy. You're gonna wanna roll me over and dunk me in the water. Cause I really, I don't wanna get dunked in the water this morning. It's pretty chilly, it's like 35 degrees. So yeah, let's do it.
Okay, well that actually went better than expected. I'm actually pretty impressed with this little kayak. It was pretty stable for the most part. I was able to stand up. I was able to maneuver around, swivel in my seat a little bit. I probably wouldn't stand up a whole lot if I unless I had to, but but yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited about this. I think so far it's a win. Now the biggest question remains is hooking this trolling motor up to this kayak. Let's check it. The trolling motor I'm using is a 55 pound thrust, which is way more powerful motor than you need for a kayak. A 30 to 40 pound thrust trolling motor would probably be better and lighter for a kayak. This trolling motor is one I already owned, which is why I'm using it. This kayak handled pretty well when I attached the trolling motor to the mount. However, it did make the kayak a little less stable. I still felt comfortable while in the kayak and was able to move around in it pretty well. Also, a trolling motor is totally optional. And really, I would only use a trolling motor on this kayak if I'm on a large lake and I want to get to my fishing spots quickly. With test runs done, it's time to load everything up and finally do some fishing. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to watching the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think I'm gonna get a lot of fun out of this kayak. There's so many different modifications that you can do to this thing. If you guys have any comments or have suggestions on what you would do, post them down in the comment section. Also, everything that I use in this video, I have linked down in the description below. If you're interested, go ahead and check those out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy the rest of my morning doing some fishing. And I don't even care if I catch any fish, because this thing is pretty sweet. That's it for this one, I'm out.